good. And in your presentation for Wired, you were already um, raging against it. Uh, what is what is your view on this whole debate? Well, there's a couple of different perspectives. First of all, please take my Wired presentation in context. I was presenting to a room full of bankers, hedge funds, investors, and financial technology companies uh, that's, that had spent the entire morning talking about how they're all about disruption and they want to disrupt their uh, industry, then they want to disrupt their own companies, uh, then they want to disrupt their own brain from the inside out so they can all be fully disrupted and embrace this revolution. And guess what? All of that was bullshit. Uh, because when presented with actual disruptive technology, uh, they run away screaming because they can't conceive of disruption that changes the fundamental principles of how they do banking control, centralization, um, and regulation, limited competition. And they want uh, to uh, adopt the efficiencies without the decentralization and the low cost, um, but with control, and the global nature, but with censorship. And you can't do that. You can't have both. You can't have the revolutionary nature of Bitcoin while stripping it of all of the things that make it revolutionary and make it interesting. Um, and you can't have a blockchain that works without a system of uh, rewards. Uh, you know, currency is an integral component to the security of the network. No one has demonstrated a decentralized or even a distributed uh, timestamped secure ledger uh, that doesn't have some system of incentives behind it. And those systems of incentives, so far we have one model that works, and that's Nakamoto consensus as implemented through proof of work and the reward of Bitcoin seniorage. Uh, that is the only model we know that works and scales and is secure. Um, what they want to do is create the CompuServe uh, equivalent to Bitcoin, the AOL equivalent to Bitcoin, kind of like the internet only closed and controlled. Um, minus the innovation, minus the excitement, minus the possibility of anyone doing anything interesting without asking for permission first. Um, is that going to increase the efficiency of some banking operations? Sure. Sure it is. Um, just, just as much as when AT&T routes its long distance phone calls over IP, um, it saves a lot of money. Is that going to change everybody else's view of the world? No. Is that going to bank 4 billion people who are currently unbanked precisely because of the issues of scale and centralization? No, of course not. That's not going, that's not revolutionary. That is to revolutionize. And I, I've used this term before. To revolutionize something is to remove anything actually revolutionary from it um, and then uh, define by committee uh, some kind of pale unrecognizable alternative that is just about palatable enough uh, to present in front of an executive committee. It's timid, it is weak, and ultimately it is ineffective, and it is the hallmark of every comfortable, fat, inefficient, corrupt industry when faced with enormous disruption to speak the words of revolution and then fail the actions of change to pretend to embrace the new, uh, 